ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு மெக்கி டெக்கி லேர்ன் ஆஸ் இன்ஜினியர் டீச் ஆஸ் சாம்பியன் ஃபஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு தேங்க் மை ஃபேமிலி ஃபார் தேர் கண்டினியூஸ் சப்போர்ட் அண்ட் என்கரேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கிரியேட்டிங் திஸ் கைன்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ டெக்னிக்கல் வீடியோஸ் இன் பப்ளிக் டு மை அண்ட் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு தேங்க் மை மென்டர் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஆர் சுரேந்திரன் ஃப்ரம் கவர்மெண்ட் காலேஜ் ஆஃப் டெக்னாலஜி கோயம்புத்தூர் ஃபார் இக்னைட்டிங் மீ எஸ் பார்க் ஆஃப் கிரியேட்டிங் திஸ் கைன்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ டெக்னிக்கல் வீடியோஸ் இன் பப்ளிக் டு மை அண்ட் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு தேங்க் ஆல் மை டீ மை காட் for my good health and broad mind and i would like to thank my friends followers my dear students and subscribers for their continuous support today's topic of interest is thermal conduction so we are going to we are going to add a part 2 on the thermal conduction if you are not seen that part 1 i would like to give the link in description box please uh, watch the video of thermal conductivity part 1 after that you come to this video uh, for your betterment of understanding in this video we are going to discuss about thermal resistance thermal diffusivity overall heat transfer coefficient and critical radius and resistance thermal resistance so first we are going to discuss about we are going to discuss about we have to clear the formulas for thermal conductivity so the, uh, generally heat transfer is made for the predicting the quality of heat transfer so conduction heat conduction is equal to k a del t by del x so if it is a convection it is h a del t so these are all the two basic formulas which you have to know since the thermal resistance the thermal resistance is the inverse of the thermal resistance is the inverse of ka by del x that is thermal resistance thermal resistance r is equal to if it is a conductive if it is a conductive thermal resistance it is del x by ka if it is convective resistance convective resistance means it is 1 by ha so this is the formula for finding the thermal resistance here the r you can you can also say the thermal resistance r is equal to del t by q that is the temperature difference divided by heat transfer so this is for uh, both conduction as well as convection this is overall heat transfer coefficient is for conduction and convection and similarly the thermal diffusivity alpha is equal to the thermal diffusivity alpha is equal to conductivity k by rho cp so thermal diffusivity is a physical property of the material thermal diffusivity is the physical property of the material where it depends upon the thermal conductivity density and specific heat capacity so we are going to discuss in detail about this relationship we know that the thermal diffusivity alpha is equal to uh, k by rho cp where the thermal diffusivity is alpha is directly proportional to thermal conductivity and similarly alpha is inversely proportional to density and alpha is inversely proportional to specific heat capacity so this is the this is the relationship between the variables involved in the thermal diffusivity if you can see the heat conductivity of the material increases the thermal diffusivity is also increases if the density increases 
the thermal conductivity dec thermal diffusivity is decreases and similarly if the specific heat capacity increases the thermal diffusivity will get reduces so this is the relationship between the thermal diffusivity and other parameters how to clear this thermal diffusivity is the property physical property of the material physical property of the material therefore diffusivity is highly dependent on the material property physical property of material that is why the conductivity of the material is important density of the material is also important and specific heat capacity is also important so next the conductive thermal resistance as we know that the, for the conduction equation q is equal to q is equal to ka del t by x x is the characteristic length therefore x is replaced with l therefore del t by q is equal to l by ka so this is the this is the thermal conductive resistance so this is the thermal conductive resistance okay and next the convective resistance we know that the heat transfer by convection which is hea del t therefore the resistance of convection is del t by q that is equal to 1 by hea so here you have to notice this you have to notice this the formula for the thermal resistance conduction which is equal to l by ka sorry l by ka where the resistance is r is directly proportional to l the thermal resistance r is directly proportional to l which means the length increases the resistance will also increases so in the in designing a fin this relationship you have to make a note that if the length increases the resistance increases and similarly if the property if the material property uh, of thermal conductivity is inversely proportional to resistance so thermal conductivity increases thermal conductivity increases the resistance will become reduces that is why the fins are made up of uh, fins are made up of uh, the thermal conductivity of the fin is a bit higher than the material so so l is also important length is also important similarly k is also important for constant area okay so similarly for the convection also for the convection also we have the resistance due to convection which is equal to 1 by hea therefore resistance is inversely proportional to heat transfer coefficient resistance is inversely proportional to heat transfer coefficient if heat transfer coefficient increases your resistance will become decreases so this is very very important in order to note yeah in order to make an insulation of an wire if the if a component is is going to become an insulation we have to consider both conduction and convection resistance so in order to get in order to get the critical radius so this you have to make a note and next the overall heat transfer coefficient is depends on both conduction and convection and the formula formula the heat flux heat flux is nothing but q by a if it is a heat flux of the conduction conduction which is equal to uh, k del t by del x so this is the conduction and for heat flux of the convection is convection is del t h into del t so this is the uh, heat flux of conduction and convection and similarly the internal heat generation means the heat by heat per volume heat transfer per volume which is called 
entire heat generation. The next is the critical radius of insulation. For what purpose the insulation is being needed? Consider this is a pipe. It is having a hot steam inside. It is having a hot steam inside. And this is an atmosphere temperature. So temperature is atmosphere. It is a bit higher than higher than atmospheric temperature. Since this is a pipe. So this is a pipe. Normally there is a temperature difference. The material will contact and convey the heat transfer from the steam from the steam to the atmosphere. So in order to resist, in order to avoid the heat transfer, we are putting a material as an insulation. So the diameter or thickness of the insulation is also important. If it exit, if it exceeds the convective coefficient, convective heat transfer is more, conductive heat transfer is more. So if the thickness exceeds the critical limit, there is also a losses. If it is below the critical limit, it is also a losses. So in order to find this critical, this critical thickness or critical radius, we put a formula, we put a resistance formula, we use a resistance formula in order to find the critical radius of insulation. So uh, for if, it, if the component is in a cylindrical form, the critical radius of insulation R is equal to K by H. If it is a sphere, which is R is equal to 2K by H. So this is the formula for finding the critical radius of insulation. Next is the thermal resistance. So thermal resistance of the different uh, component have been given here. If it is a parallel resistance, 1 by equal resistance is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. We know that R is equal to R is equal to L by Ka. If it is 1 by R, which is Ka by L. So by using this, the parallel and series, if it is a series means R equal is equal to R1 plus R2. If it is a uh, if it is a parallel, R equal is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. So this is for parallel, this is for series. So with the help of these formulas, we have found we have found the equivalent resistance, equivalent thermal resistance of the material. If it is a slab material, it is simply R is equal to L by Ka. If it is a cylindrical material, which is R is equal to ln of R2 by R1 whole divided by 2 pi KL. 2 pi KL. And similarly for this pair, R1, R2 minus R1 whole divided by 4 pi K into R1, R2. So this is the thermal resistance of the cylinder and sphere. And now we are going to see the thermal conductivity of different materials. The thermal conductivity which is K which is denoted as watt per watt per watt per meter Kelvin where heat transfer coefficient H is indicated in a unit watt per meter square Kelvin watt per meter square Kelvin. So this you have to make a note. For the metal diamond, the thermal conductivity is more. Diamond is a better conductive material. Diamond will have a better conductivity, highest conductivity. So it is 2300 watt per meter Kelvin. For silver, it is 405. For the copper, it is 385. For the gold, it is 319. And for aluminium, it is 200, brass it is 100, cast iron it is 60, and mercury it is 8. And similarly, for the non-metallic materials, alloys it is 12 to 120, for glasses it is 1.2, for concrete it is 1, brick it is 0.6, asbestos it is 0.2, rubber is 0.13, and wool it is 0.11 so wool will not conduct heat maximum it will not conduct heat 
and similarly for liquid and gases water it is 0 0.6 gas it is 0 0.006 to 0 0.05 for air it is 0 0.024 for freon it is 0 0.0083 for ice 2.25 so here you have to notice this the freon will have a at least freon will have a least conduction freon will have a least conduction than any other metals as well as the fluids so you may get an answer a question like this which of which of the following will have a least thermal conductivity they have given an alloy gas water and freon or uh, you can have to choose the freon is the least thermal conductivity uh, among the among the given so this you have to make a note and and we have a certain relation the thermal conductivity of the crystalline material is more than thermal conductivity of an amorphous material and similarly thermal conductivity of the solid phase is more than thermal conductivity of the gas and also thermal conductivity of the pure metals is more than thermal conductivity of the alloys here I have to notice this the thermal conductivity is independent of pressure it is independent of pressure except vacuum okay and thermal conductivity is independent of pressure in liquid except critical point so except critical point uh, the, it is independent of pressure at the critical point it is dependent on pressure and similarly at the vacuum it is dependent on pressure and lattice vibration is for lattice fiber vibration heat conduction is for non conductors semiconductors crystalline materials and similarly the k thermal conductivity is directly proportional to temperature for all the metals except all the metals except mercury aluminum uranium glycerin water glycerin and water and for the thermal conductivity of the gases thermal conductivity of the gases k is directly proportional to t therefore k is directly proportional to square root of t by m where km is equal to k naught into 1 plus beta t beta is the positive for non metallic non metallic and insulator material except bricks magnet and negative for metallic conductor except aluminum so this you have to notice this so for gases if the gas temperature increases thermal conductivity also increases if for the gases temperature increases thermal conductivity is also increases for the metals if the k increases then the temperature is directly proportional to k therefore it will get decreases so this is for metals so this is for liquids okay next you have to notice this for the lubricating oil heat thermal conductivity is unchanged with respect to temperature and the conductor thermal conductivity maximum thermal conductivity at minimum temperature drop and for the insulator minimum thermal conductivity at maximum temperature drop so with this i'm going to close today's session about the thermal conductivity i hope you have enjoyed the video if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section and i will put on another video for clarifying your doubts so until bye bye from santos thank you thank you for patient listening